Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Recently I have been doing a bunch of opal treatments on this material right here. So this is Fairy Opal from Queensland. Much like Andamooka, you can get it very soft and loose or you can get it really dense and compact. This is somewhere in between. It's uh, just blank tiles though it turns out they're not quite so blank. There's some purple streaks through them. But I've been testing three of the most classic methods of treating this stuff. So we've got them right here. If you want to check out each of the individual videos on how to do it, feel free to check them out. There is a playlist on the channel for just this topic. But today we'll just focus on the differences between them and that is, so that's an oil and heat, sugar and heat, and then sugar and acid, sulfuric acid in particular, to do a bit of a dehydration reaction. And right here you can see three examples of those treatments. But the first thing I'll state that's different between all three of these, I can eat this one, well drink it, I can eat this one. This one I don't even have a little sample cup of because you can't touch it, you definitely can't eat it, you don't want to breathe it, it is nasty stuff so I didn't even want to get a little cup of it out. So factor number one, that can automatically disqualify this method for a lot of people. And you shouldn't feel too sad about that because I don't actually rate it that highly and we'll have a close look at each of these stones and you can see why. Okay so having a bit of a closer look, this is the raw material. Queensland Fairy Opal, it's like a boulder but it's got a little bit of dispersed opal all amongst it. Some pieces are much more colourful than this. This is the very low grade stuff because it's being absolutely sliced apart and abused. With all of these stabilisations and treatments, it's uh, yeah, this lab is not long for this world and at the end I will have pretty much nothing usable other than the information that it reveals. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like raw, out of the ground, simply just sliced and washed a little bit. This is what it is. You can start to see a little bit of a streak there if I chuck a little water on. There you go. So wet, you can see it's got this little purple streak if I can stop the glare from taking over. Of course in the higher grade ones there's a lot more colour everywhere. But that's what it looks like. A light brown, dry, it's more of a tan kind of colour. Pretty much skin tone colour of a half Japanese guy that doesn't see the sun very much at the moment. So keep that in mind. Now we've got these three. We've got oil and heat, sugar and heat, sugar and acid. Now the sugar and acid one is a lot lighter and there is a reason for that. And since it's the clearest difference between all three, I might as well talk about that one first. With the sugar and acid at the end, there's a neutralization step. If you check out the video, you'll see a lot of fizzy bubbles. That's me neutralizing the sulfuric acid out so it's safe to basically do this. Safe to handle, safe to cut, safe to stabilize, all of that kind of stuff. Otherwise you're going to have really concentrated acid just trapped within the stone. Now what I did behind the scenes is I neutralized it a lot and I washed it a lot. And as you can see, each time I did, it got a little bit lighter and lighter. It was much more like the sugar one, a little bit fainter. Not quite as dark, the sugar one treated really well. But you can see over time I have actually managed to wash a lot of the treatment off. Now because of that I have absolutely abused one of each of these as well and they have retained their colour. Now my guess is because you're doing a dehydration reaction, you're not really baking the sugar onto the stone. What you're doing is you're dehydrating the sugar wherever it's sitting and if you've burnt something in a beaker in comparison to doing the carbon snake experiment with the sulfuric acid and sugar, it is much easier to clean the beaker afterwards when you do this. It doesn't seem to cling to the surface as well. So if you just keep doing the neutralization processes, you can almost completely reverse the treatment. Not quite. If we have a look here, you've, you've lost all of that yellow. There's a lot of trapped carbon in the pores, which is just darkening the overall stone. But a lot of the stuff on the surface has washed away quite quickly. Keeping in mind that all of these came from the same slab, same piece. Most of them adjacent to each other. And I've done a, many more tests than just these three. And it's a consistent result. So the treatment method involving the sugar and sulfuric acid actually doesn't really treat the stone as permanently as the others. The others are really locked in but this one you can actually start loosening up and washing off that carbon deposit which I found quite interesting. Of course it can just be retreated and maybe each time there'll be more trapped in there and also you really don't need to wash it as hard as I did. I just noticed that some color was draining and I just overkilled it and did it multiple multiple times which is not realistic anyway. So you will have a darker color. It'll be something more like this oil rather than the sugar that went real dark. And you can see in the corner of each of them 
I've taken out a little chunk with the Dremel. And that was just to test the penetration depth of the treatment. And because these are quite small slabs, the penetration's been pretty good. Once again, the sugar and sulfuric acid one is not that great, even though the sugar should have made it the same distance as what it did in the sugar and heat method. The sugar treatment part is exactly the same. One just cooks the stone afterwards and one just soaks it in sulfuric acid. But you can see the penetration of the treatment was not that great. Doesn't matter too much to be honest because when you're doing this you're going to pre-cut the stones and all you're going to need to do after the treatment is do a little bit of polishing and or stabilizing which will be coming up on the channel very soon. Now when you compare the oil and the sugar the oil does come up a little bit patchier. This side's not so bad, but it does come up a little patchy and you get a little bit of like a glazing look. So you can get some shiny spots. Sometimes the entire tile can come up pretty shiny and that's just from burning the oil on. It also requires a much higher temperature than what the sugar does. The sugar breaks down really easily unless you can find a really low, a really low smoke point oil like I tried to in the video, then you are gonna struggle a little bit getting it high enough temperature to be able to actually burn it up. And it might mean that it takes quite a bit longer than what it takes to burn up the sugar. So really from all the testing, if you want nice consistent results with this material, I've gotta say that it's very hard to go past the sugar and heating method. It's super easy to do, sugar and an oven, a slow cooker so you can keep it nice and warm and get that solution right into the center but apart from that it's really i mean the oil's just as simple but it really does get a very even finish you can do a hundred stones from the same slab like i did and they come out almost exactly the same as this this is one of the thicker ones and the treatment really penetrated a long way and i didn't use a vacuum chamber on this one i will show how to do that in the future but right now it's not a priority because the treatment actually gets in quite a long way. I've even sliced a couple of these stones in half and it's gone all the way through and they're not really thin, tiny little slabs. They're quite thick tiles. Now, if I give them all a little bit of a wet on the surface, you can also have a look at how they look if they were polished and or stabilized and coated. And you can see that sugar one is, it really is getting to the, to the black stage. That was a single treatment that requires about 24 hours. You can do an overnight soak in the sugar solution and then you can just burn it. Same thing for the oil and then the sulfuric acid was a bit more involved with the sulfuric acid part. But I can I consistently get really good results with the sugar, whereas the oil can be a bit spotty and the sulfuric acid one, it you can basically reverse it if you really do wash the stone enough. You can see even here, just taking it off, there's a little bit a little bit of color coming out of that stone just from doing that little splash and these have been washed to an inch of their lives well they these all have but this one really does lose its color whereas behind here you'll see that there's uh nothing nothing coming off it is really cooked onto the surface so the adherence of the treatment seems a lot better for both of these two methods than the sulfuric acid one which does kind of make sense so Really, if I was to advise anyone to do this at home, I would just say go to the supermarket, grab yourself a couple kilo bag of sugar or pounds if you're in the US, chuck it in a slow cooker overnight, take them out the next day, give them a bake in the oven, follow the instructions in the video and you should end up with really good stones. But now I've got to move on and show you how to stabilize them because this one is so porous, there's no way it's going to shine up. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. So let me get back to that. Hope you guys all have a great end to the year. This is being filmed during the festive season, Christmas, New Year's, either side of this video. So hopefully you're all having a great time and we hit 2025 full force and punch through another really good year. Make sure to swing past the channel and say hi. Anyway, I'll see you then.